tragic event that most certainly stunted the development and growth of West and Central Africa due to the unequal exchange of goods for human life. We speak frequently about the horrors of slavery, but sometimes we miss just how chaotic it was for West and Central African kingdoms. At one moment, you can be the enslaver, and the next, become enslaved. Even the very elite could fall victim. And so today, we're not going to tell a story from rags to riches. Today's topic is going to tell the unfortunate story of five African royals who went from riches to rags. What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And as always, if you want to support the Home Team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and Home Team merchandise are in the description box below. The Congo Empire gives us direct insight into just how chaotic the Atlantic slave trade was. One king named Mbemba Nzinga and his dealings with the Portuguese sought to put an end to the slave trade altogether because he realized that they weren't just enslaving African enemies of Congo, they were enslaving his own ethnic group and to his horror, his own royal family members. And them and Zinga had this to say in a letter to a Portuguese king. Each day the traitors are kidnapping our people, children of this country, sons of our nobles and vassals, even people of our own family. This corruption and depravity are so widespread that our land is entirely depopulated. We need in this kingdom only priests and school teachers and no merchandise, unless it is wine and flour for mass. It is our wish that this kingdom not be a place for the trade or transport of slaves. Many of our subjects eagerly lust after Portuguese merchandise that your subjects have brought into our domains. To satisfy this inordinate appetite, they seize many of our black free subjects. They sell them after having taken these prisoners secretly or at night. As soon as the captives are in the hands of white men, they are branded with a red hot iron. The enslavement of African royalty not only happened in the Congo Empire, but all over West and Central Africa. So let's tell the stories of five African royals who were taken in the Atlantic slave trade. Our first African royal is Prince Abdurrahman Abrahim Abin Sori. Abdurrahman Sori was a Fulani prince from the Futo Jalan region of modern day Guinea, West Africa. His father, Almami Abrahim Sori, was a ruler of the Futo Jalan in 1776, where his son lived and studied. Abdurrahman was very intelligent and a well-learned African who spoke four different languages and could read and write in Arabic. After he finished his studies at Timbuktu, he joined his father's army, his father making him the head of a 2,000-man army whose mission was to protect the coast and strengthen their economic interests in the region. It was during one of Abdurrahman's military campaigns that he was captured and sold into slavery. He was sold to the British who brought him to Mississippi, where he labored on the cotton plantation of Thomas Foster for about 40 years. Abdurrahman used his knowledge to write a letter to his relatives in Africa. A Dutch man named Andrew Marshall was kind enough to send the letter to the U.S. Senator at the time, Thomas Reed of Mississippi. Thomas Reed gave the letter to the U.S. Consulate in Morocco because the U.S. government assumed Abdurrahman was a Moor. After the Sultan of Morocco read the letter, he asked President Adams and Secretary of State Henry Clay to release Abdurrahman. And a few years later, Prince Abdurrahman was released. Unfortunately, Prince Abdurrahman could not return immediately to Africa as he had made a family in America and he fought to free his children. As he could not free all of his children, he instead decided to return to Africa, going to Liberia. Our next African royal is Princess Anta Marugune Ndai. Anta was a princess of the will of people in modern day Senegal. At the tender age of 13, she was captured and sent to Cuba, where she was unfortunately purchased by Zephaniah Kingsley, a slave trader and plantation owner of the Spanish colony of Florida. During this time, her region was in constant warfare and slave raids were a great threat to everyone in the region. Her life is interesting because she went from princess to slave to slave owner and eventually a central figure in a free black community. At the age of 18, she was officially freed apparently, 
but that did not stop her from having responsibilities on the plantation in East Florida. Over time, she managed a large plantation and became the personal owner of 12 slaves herself. Her new family defended their territory from invading Americans and was awarded a land grant by the Spanish government. She later died in Jacksonville, Florida at 77 years of age. Our next African royal is William Ansa Cesaraco. William Ansa Cesaraco was the son of Fante chief John Caranti, who was the leader of the Anambo government in southern Ghana. Ironically, his father was a chief official in supplying enslaved Africans to Europeans. Over time, European powers became interested in gaining access to the wealth of Anambo. William Ansa's father wanted his son to get educated in England and, more importantly, build relationships. The man entrusted to send William Ansa to England instead betrayed John Caranti and sent his son, William, to Barbados as a slave. Years later, a Fonte trader happened to see Ansa in Barbados and quickly alerted John Caranti of his son's fate. Caranti petitioned the British to free Ansa, and the Royal African Company and the English Joint Stock Company operating the slave trade liberated Ansa and transported him to England. In England, Ansa was received as a prince and gained the respect of London's high society. Our next African royal is King Taki of Ghana. King Taki was a ruler or chief of the Fante people in central Ghana. He can be considered a sort of warrior king as he had frequent military encounters with his enemies, the Ashanti. He himself sold some of his rivals, the Ashanti and others, into slavery as war captives to the British. Like others on this list, ironically, he himself became enslaved once he lost the battle. King Taki was taken to Jamaica where he conspired with Queen Nanny of Jamaica to take over the island in a war with the British. In 1760, Chief Taki and his men started a revolt at their local plantation, killing the owners and finding a lot of early success. Many slaves joined in King Taki's rebellion. However, King Taki was later hunted and killed and the rebellion was eventually put down. And finally, our last African royal is Ganga Zumba. Ganga Zumba was the first leader of a massive runaway slave settlement in Brazil. Zumba was an enslaved African who escaped bondage on a sugar plantation and eventually rose to the position of highest authority, literally creating his own kingdom in Brazil. This tremendous achievement gave him the title Ganga Zumba, meaning Great Lord. Ganga was said to be African royalty as he was the son of a princess from the Congo Empire. During warfare with the Portuguese, reportedly the Battle of Embuela, he was captured as a prisoner of war and sent off to Brazil. Ganga helped to form Maroon communities of former enslaved Africans in Brazil, which later formed into a well-organized kingdom in which he became king. By the 1670s, Ganga Zumba had a palace, three wives, guards, ministers, and devoted subjects at his royal compound called Macaco. The compound consisted of 1,500 houses, which housed his family, guards, and officials, all of which were considered royalty. It's so fitting that a royal of the Congo Empire would continue his elevated lineage by literally creating an empire of his own under the worst conditions possible. That is indeed legendary. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in this continued production, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link.